Hello students and learners. Welcome to Montech Medical Minds. Continue your learning with us and enjoy the session. Let's our trainer continue the session. ICD-10-CM Official Guidelines for Coding and Reporting Section B General Coding Guidelines Guideline 1. Locating a code in the ICD-10-CM to select a code in the classification that corresponds to a diagnosis or reason for visit documented in a medical record, first locate the term in the alphabetic index, and then verify the code in the tabular list. Read and be guided by instructional notations that appear in both the alphabetic index and the tabular list. See the image as an example of alphabetic index of main terms and subterms. It is essential to use both the alphabetic index and tabular list when locating and assigning a code. The alphabetic index does not always provide the full code. Selection of the full code, including laterality and any applicable seventh character, can only be done in the tabular list. A dash at the end of an alphabetic index entry indicates that additional characters are required. Even if a dash is not included at the alphabetic index entry, it is necessary to refer to the tabular list to verify that no seventh character required. As you see this image as an example, a zero zero is a category of cholera further expanded with fourth digit characters. A zero one is a category of typhoid and paratyphoid fevers further specified as fourth and fifth digit characters. Guideline 2 Level of Detail in Coding Diagnosis codes are to be used and reported at their highest number of characters available and to the highest level of specificity documented in the medical record. ICD-10 CM diagnosis codes are composed of codes with 3, 4, 5, 6, or 7 characters. Codes with three characters are included in ICD-10 CM as the heading of a category of codes that may be further subdivided by the use of fourth and or fifth characters and or sixth characters, which provide greater detail. A three-character code is to be used only if it is not further subdivided. A code is invalid if it has not been coded to the full number of characters required for that code, including the seventh character, if applicable. Guideline 3 Code or Codes from A00.0 .0 through T88.9, Z00, Z99.8, U00, U85. The appropriate code or codes from A00.0 .0 through T88.9, Z00, Z99.8, and U00, U85 must be used to identify diagnoses, symptoms, conditions, problems, complaints or other reasons for the encounter slash visit. Except chapter number 20. Chapter number 20 is external cause codes. Please see the image as how the chapters and codes 8 classified and categorized. Guideline 4 Signs and Symptoms Codes that describe symptoms and signs, as opposed to diagnoses, are acceptable for reporting purposes when a related definitive diagnosis has not been established, confirmed, by the provider. Chapter 18 of ICD-10-CM, Symptoms, Signs, and Abnormal Clinical and Laboratory Findings, Not Elsewhere Classified, Codes are 00.0, R99, contains many, but not all, codes for symptoms. Example for review, as seen in the image. Headache is a sign and symptom and is integral part of meningitis, hence cannot be reported separately. Abdominal pain is a sign and symptom and is an integral part of cholecystitis, hence cannot be reported separately.
Guideline 5 Conditions that are an integral part of a disease process signs and symptoms that are associated routinely with a disease process should not be assigned as additional codes, unless otherwise instructed by the classification. Example 1. A patient is admitted with nausea and vomiting due to infectious gastroenteritis. Nausea and vomiting are common symptoms of infectious gastroenteritis and are not reported. Example 2. A patient is admitted with severe joint pain and rheumatoid arthritis. Severe joint pain is a characteristic part of rheumatoid arthritis and is not reportable. Guideline 6 Conditions that are not an integral part of a disease process. Additional signs and symptoms that may not be associated routinely with a disease process should be coded when present. Example 1. A patient is admitted by ambulance following a cerebrovascular accident suffered at work. The patient was in a coma but gradually recovers consciousness. Diagnosis at discharge is reported as cerebrovascular thrombosis with coma. In this case, coma is coded as an additional diagnosis because it is not implicit in a cerebrovascular accident and is not always present. Example 2. A 5-year-old boy is admitted with a 104-degree fever associated with acute pneumonia. During the first 24 hours, the patient also experiences convulsions due to the high fever. Both the pneumonia and the convulsions are reported because convulsions are not routinely associated with pneumonia. No code is assigned for fever, however, because it is commonly associated with pneumonia. Guideline 7 Multiple Coding for a Single Condition In the tabular list, the need for dual coding is indicated by the presence of a use additional code note with the code for the underlying condition, and a code first underlying condition note with the manifestation code. Examples Dementia and Parkinson's disease is to be coded both dementia and Parkinson's disease. Arthritis and hemophilia is to be coded both arthritis and hemophilia. Severe sepsis is to be assigned with two or more codes such as sepsis, severe sepsis, and organ failure, if any. The sequencing of codes based on the instructional guidelines of etiology and manifestations and alphabetic index. Guideline 8 Acute and Chronic Conditions if the same condition is described as both acute, subacute, and chronic, and separate subentries exist in the alphabetic index at the same indentation level, code both and sequence the acute, subacute, code first. Example, renal failure has two separate entries for acute renal failure and chronic renal failure. If the physician documents both acute renal failure and chronic renal failure, or acute on chronic renal failure, both codes are required to assign. Acute code to be sequenced first followed by chronic code. Guideline 9 Combination Code A combination code is a single code used to classify two diagnoses, or a diagnosis with an associated secondary process, manifestation. A diagnosis with an associated complication. Examples for review. Code for acute cholecystitis is K80.0. Code for cholelithiasis is K80.20. However, if both diagnoses cholelithiasis and acute cholecystitis exists, then use a combination code that is K80.00. Code for acute pharyngitis is J02.9 and code for streptococcal infections is a 49.1. However, if acute pharyngitis is due to streptococcal infection, then this should be coded with a combination code as J02.0 as seen in the example. Guideline 10 Sequela, Late Effects 
A late effect is a residual condition that remains after the termination of the acute phase of an illness or injury. Such conditions may occur at any time after an acute injury or illness. There is no set period of time that must elapse before a condition is considered to be a late effect. Some late effects are apparent early, others may make an appearance long after the original injury or illness has been resolved. Certain conditions due to trauma, such as contractures and scarring, are inherent late effects no matter how early they occur. Codes that indicate the cause of a late effect can be located by referring to the main term sequelae in the alphabetic index of diseases and injuries, with the exception of late effects due to injury, poisoning, and certain other consequences of external causes. Complete coding of late effects requires two codes, the condition or nature of the late effect the late effect code the condition or nature of the late effect is sequenced first, followed by the code for the cause of the late effect except in a few instances where the alphabetic index or the tabular list directs otherwise. Guideline 11 Impending or Threatened Condition Code any condition described at the time of discharge as impending or threatened as follows. If it did occur, code as confirmed diagnosis. If it did not occur, Reference the alphabetic index to determine if the condition has a subentry term for impending or threatened and also reference main term entries for impending and for threatened. If the subterms are listed, assign the given code. If the subterms are not listed, code the existing underlying conditions and not the condition described as impending or threatened. Guideline 12 Reporting Same Diagnosis Code More Than Once Each unique ICD-10 CM diagnosis code may be reported only once for an encounter. This applies to bilateral conditions when there are no distinct codes identifying laterality or two different conditions classified to the same ICD-10 CM diagnosis code. Guideline 13 Laterality some ICD-10 CM codes indicate laterality, specifying whether the condition occurs on the left, right or is bilateral. If no bilateral code is provided and the condition is bilateral, assign separate codes for both the left and right side. If the side is not identified in the medical record, assign the code for the unspecified side. Guideline 14 Documentation by Clinicians Other Than the Patient's Provider Code assignment is based on the documentation by the patient's provider, i.e., physician or other qualified healthcare practitioner legally accountable for establishing the patient's diagnosis. There are a few exceptions when code assignment may be based on medical record documentation from clinicians who are not the patient's provider, i.e., physician or other qualified healthcare practitioner legally accountable for establishing the patient's diagnosis. In this context, clinicians other than the patient's provider refer to healthcare professionals permitted, based on regulatory or accreditation 10 CM official guidelines for coding and reporting FI 2023-15 of ICD page 118 requirements or internal hospital policies, to document in a patient's official medical record. These exceptions include codes for body mass index, BMI, depth of non-pressure, chronic ulcers, pressure ulcer stage, coma scale, NIH stroke scale, NIHSS, social determinants of health, SDOH, laterality blood alcohol level under immunization status. Guideline 15 Syndromes Follow the alphabetic index guidance when coding syndromes. In the absence of alphabetic index guidance, assign codes for the documented manifestations of the syndrome. Additional codes for manifestations that are not an integral part of the disease process may also be assigned when the condition does not have a unique code. Guideline 16 Documentation of Complications of Care 
Code assignment is based on the provider's documentation of the relationship between the condition and the care or procedure, unless otherwise instructed by the classification. There must be a cause and effect relationship between the care provided and the condition, and the documentation must support that the condition is clinically significant. Every systemic chapter having a classification of complication under interoperative and postoperative complications. Also, further classification as a complication occurred during the same system procedure or other system procedure. Review the below image for an example. Guideline 17 Borderline Diagnosis If the provider documents a borderline diagnosis at the time of discharge, the diagnosis is coded as confirmed, unless the classification provides a specific entry, example, borderline diabetes. If a borderline condition has a specific index entry in ICD-10 CM, it should be coded as such. Since borderline conditions are not uncertain diagnoses, no distinction is made between the care setting, inpatient versus outpatient. Whenever the documentation is unclear regarding a borderline condition, coders are encouraged to query for clarification. Guideline 18 Use of sign slash symptom slash unspecified codes Sign slash symptom and unspecified codes have acceptable, even necessary, uses. While specific diagnosis codes should be reported when they are supported by the available medical record documentation and clinical knowledge of the patient's health condition, there are instances when signs slash symptoms or unspecified codes are the best choices for accurately reflecting the healthcare encounter. Each healthcare encounter should be coded to the level of certainty known for that encounter. Guideline 19 Coding for Healthcare Encounters in Hurricane Aftermath Use of external cause of morbidity codes and external cause of morbidity code should be assigned to identify the cause of the injury, IES, incurred as a result of the hurricane. The use of external cause of morbidity codes is supplemental to the application of ICD-10 CM codes. External cause of morbidity codes are never to be recorded as a principal diagnosis, first listed in non-inpatient settings. All of you students and learners, thank you for joining the session. Do not forget to contact your educators and coordinators for the review sessions and doubt clarifications. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube for more training updates.